work with the MLTPA, and I'm here today, today to talk to you about snow play in Mammoth Lakes. So let's get started. Um, just want to talk uh, very quickly about the Winter Rec Summit process. So your input today is very important. We're here. Um, so the blue box, we're today in the summit, so all of your input is going to go directly back into a couple additional meetings and then into implementations of some tangible things to go around this. So please feel free to uh, voice your opinion. All right, now to the fun stuff. Um, so as part of this process, we had two stakeholder meetings. So we also consulted the trail system master plan, so if you looked at any of the links on the website, um, this is directly out of the trail system master plan. It's all of the winter recreation nodes and descriptions of potential uses for these nodes. All right, in the last three weeks, I've spent my weekends um, doing a snow play survey, so we'll kind of get into that in a little bit more at the end, but I was at five locations, Barrow Pit, Mill City, uh, Lake Mary Enclosure, Scenic Loop, and Shady Rest. My coworker Kim helped as well, and we had a member of the public, Kathleen, jump in and help us do some surveys as well. Um, in between surveys, we were kind of the informal crew fairies for Mammoth, um, picking up food and trash, so that was an extra component as well, so we definitely appreciate folks jumping in and helping as well. Um, definitely not required. Um, so a couple of, so we had five main questions we were asking people. Um, where are you from? How did you learn of this snow play location? And were other options provided? We also wanted to gauge what the experiences folks were having snow playing at these locations, so we asked the general question, how was it? Um, and the most important question I think in the survey also was, what can we do to improve snow play experiences at these locations as well? So we were taking data on all five aspects of these as well, and we have three weekends worth of data. Um, here again is the informal ferry and snow play survey team. Um, so just to give you a couple of quick totals, um, total contacts 92 folks we talked to, total surveys 20, but they tended to be uh, rather large groups that we talked to. Um, and 84% of the people we surveyed were from Southern California, so this kind of brings in a uh, visiting population perspective as well to what we're talking about. Um, and as a side note, they did tally up the trash that we collected, which was approximately 359 pounds. I don't know. Yeah. I can write down a map for you if you want. I've got an Excel spreadsheet. <laughs> um, obviously, there's going to be some snow and debris, but <coughs> ballpark no. <laughs> All right. So let's get back into the fun stuff. So I think uh, one of the most important things we can do today is determine what is snow play. One of the things I noticed when I talked to folks, um, those that declined the survey often said, I don't have kids, I don't snow play. Or they were actually snow playing and they said to me, we haven't been to Woolworths, so we don't know anything about what snow play. So I think um, creating a definition for snow play and mammoth is going to be important, especially for tailoring a lot of these nodes or areas um, specifically for snow play. So I'm proposing, um, we'll kind of go through a couple of slides, but um, our definition should add up to participants, um, who's participating in snow play, what activities are they doing, and where are the appropriate locations. So I think these are the three components that should go into a definition. And I'll kind of briefly go over a couple ideas, and I'm definitely going to look to all of you to kind of give you some feedback on what uh, what we should add or subtract to this definition. Okay, so the fun part, snow play activities. My definition personally, anything that's fun in the snow. Um, <laughs> but if you look at a lot of the different websites, whether it's Forest Service, Mammoth Trails website, um, Google, Mammoth Tra or, I'm sorry, Mammoth Lakes Recreation, um, Mammoth Lakes Tourism, they all have different definitions, or some of them just kind of gloss over snow play, and it's just building snowmen or doing snow angels. So then I'm proposing gravity-driven snow play, like sledding the attic, um, building various snow forts and sculptures, snowball fights, everybody's favorite memory growing up, making snow angels, and then also just general activities of frolicking. A lot of people just do that as well. All right, so who participates? Um, 
you know, as if we go back to my survey where folks are just saying, oh, it's, you know, family and kids, but I think I've seen a lot of folks come up here with friends, especially dogs. If you go out to any of these locations, dogs are huge because they're a member of the family uh, for a lot of folks. So I think that should also be incorporated in this overall definition. Um, I'd also like to add all ages and abilities. Snow play is kind of like the great equalizing activity. It's great for uh, the young and old uh, to get out there and just have fun. All right, and so this is our wonderful uh, Eastern Sierra winter recreation map. Um, and so currently on this map, if you go by the icons, it's just Dead Man Summit Hill at the top and Woolies Two Park are the two that actually have the snow plate icons. Um, so that's kind of, according to this map, if we hand this to a visitor, that would be what they're seeing as two approved locations. What um, we're kind of proposing is adding uh, the additional circles like the scenic loop, Shady Rest, the Borrow Pit, Mill City, Lake Mary Closure, and Mammoth Creek. Yes. Can I ask you, um, what, what do you mean by defined? Who establishes a defined snowplay area? What, when you say those two are defined as snowplay areas, what does that mean? In this context, I would say just by the map, like this is just. Um, since this, is that a Forest Service map? This is a, map? it's the man, yeah, the Eastern Sierra Winter Rec map that's put out by the Forest Service. So, you know, it's just kind of reaching back to some formal documents and just saying, like, what's out there for um, people yeah, to it's, reference. Yeah, it would probably be designated that would be the signs and stuff like that. The others are all in Because Rock Creek is also a kind of a winter yeah, snow park. It's, yeah. it's a snow yeah. park, yeah. 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 Um, it's a little different, I would say, though, um, because there's a fee associated with that. Yeah, so, yeah, so maybe we can think about what, what, who's assigning it as a snowplay area? What is that? No, the certified. Who is it? Yeah, what is the criteria? Versus yeah, no. Right. So that's why I asked. Does it mean it? No, it's a good question. Because it, does it mean it's supervised, or is it? Yeah. What, what type of? And we'll definitely. It, when, you, when you set up the map, it's an expectation for you. That's right. What's the obligation of versus something that. Otherwise, that wood site is probably more popular. Yeah. <laughs> that or what the AA church, yeah, I yeah, think, right. is the, yeah, yeah. the, the, the scary yeah. steep hill. Which we don't yeah. Know. Um, no, I think that's a really that's important. Recent. Yeah, I, it's a really important question so to, that, yeah. to examine. Yeah, exactly. Is. Um, you know, if we do decide to add some extra locations, you know, whoever goes through that process, whichever organizations to be involved, um, we need to make sure that there's facilities, absolutely. Um, so, you know, and that's going to go into this definition, so we'll definitely talk about that. Um, so kind of jumping ahead, because we'll probably revisit most of this, um, what is proper snowplay etiquette? We're going to send folks to kind of formalized locations, what kind of etiquette do we want to see when we're out there? So I wanted to start with some pictures of what is not good snowplay etiquette, yeah, in my no opinion. Blues, no so top picture is the borrow pit, and all of the brown piles are poop. Um, on the bottom, that's Lake Mary Road closure, and that's a bucket full of droppings that we found just in that snowplay location. Obviously, that's not good to have all that brown snow where kids and families are playing. Um, and then this this one on the right-hand side is from the scenic loop. Um, my co and I found uh, broken sleds there quite often. So this, if we're going to send folks to snowplay areas, have a trash bin or somebody that's going out there making sure that we just don't have trash kind of strewn in these areas. So just a couple things to think about. Um, kind of getting back to that, I would propose leave no trace ethic in this etiquette. Um, Multi-use, since a lot of these areas, there's going to be snowshoers, cross-country skiers, um, you know, maybe staging out of some of these areas all at the same time. Um, I'm going to kind of quote Joel again here. And being neighborly, I think, is a huge part of any etiquette for all these uh, different winter recreation tracks. Um, and then, of course, just general uh, general etiquettes as well. Um, and again, I think a lot um, with formalizing these locations, safety is going to be a big part of that. So we're going to need to have a very strong safety message as well. Um, so I just kind of generalize a lot of these situational awareness. You know, when folks are done sledding down the hill, that they're not getting in the way of people coming behind them, picking the right terrain, not the super icy. I personally think of the AA church where it's that super steep grade, always icy, you know, not much of a run out. 
um, being part of that as well. Cars. <laughs> There's, you know, occasionally cars. <laughs> yeah. Um, you know, more specifically, gravity-driven snow uh, safety tips, because I, I know that's kind of a big issue with that. A lot of folks get hurt doing that particular snowplay activity. Um, and I put avalanche safety and awareness because there are certain areas where uh, we send people to, there are avalanche zones nearby, so we need to have a, maybe a cautionary sign of some sort to let people know that that's a problem. <laughs> um, and then kind of why we're all here, enhancing snowplay and mammoths. So we're gonna ask you all to prioritize all these notes. Um, and kind of with the bigger picture of um, droughts and snowpocalypse winters that we have, you know, sometimes we have big winters, sometimes we don't. You know, prioritize some of these locations based on elevations so that we're covered if we have a drought or if we have uh, a ton of snow in some years. Um, generally speaking, we want to look at uh, structural enhancements, signage, communication, public transit, and then miscellaneous catch-all category, whatever you can dream of. I've had the suggestion of food and beverage vendors potentially as uh, on the wish list. Um, so this is some of the snowplay data, and I'll kind of go over this quickly and come back to it if it's of interest. Um, but I found that in asking people how did you learn of the snowplay location, most people drove around or explored. Um, so if this is the case, then potentially um, additional signage in town to get people to these locations or um, adding these to maps for folks to uh, track down on their own. Um, and the other big piece, of course, is local knowledge. So a lot of folks um, either used to live here or they know somebody that used to live here. So these are the two big pieces of the puzzle in terms of how people found these locations. Um, and in terms of were other options provided, um, only 39% of the folks I talked to had other options provided. And of those, on this bottom right is kind of the uh, breakdown. But essentially, most people were, to were uh, told bullies as kind of the main that's the other op option. So that's uh, another kind of uh, piece of the puzzle to think about, you know, as we go forward. Um, and the big question that we're all really excited to hear the results of, how can we improve the snowplay experience? 21% um, said signage at these locations. And that varied from parking to just designating this is a snowplay area type of sign. Um, you know, after that, it kind of gets into um, some people were having so much fun, they actually didn't have any comment. They were just like, I have, this is wonderful. I have no comments at all. Um, so that was kind of an unexpected result of that as well. I didn't expect to hear that. Um, bathrooms and trash cans were the next big, big things as well. So, you know, um, diving into this a bit more. So structural enhancements we're proposing. Bathrooms, trash or recycling facilities, parking. Um, public transit enhancements also came up in terms of potentially adding uh, the Borrow Pit or Mill City to um, existing transit loops, um, and which would also help mitigate some parking issues. Um, and again, the, the fun catch all enhancements, um, hot chocolate and snack vendors came up too. Um, it was suggested perhaps during high traffic periods, holidays, weekends. Um, some folks uh, wanted additional dog poo bags. That's a bit uh, up for debate. <laughs> but uh, based on the other half of my project, we will see. Um, in terms of signage enhancements, I touched on this a little bit. Um, snow play area signs, hazard signs, such as at Mill City, like the avalanche area. Parking area signs were suggested because some folks were confused about where to park. Um, I think some of the other tracks today I've mentioned this triangle as well, but a winter etiquette triangle I think can go a long way to kind of creating a uh, multi-user community uh, of folks being neighborly. Um, and the other half of my project, um, scooping poop for three weekends, the poop fairy aspect. So they do actually have a poop fairy signage campaign, so that's something else to think about if you want to go that route as well, if you think it's a big enough issue that needs to be addressed in an open to the sign. Um, this, I believe, the, the last few tracks we talked about as well. Um, communication enhancements, how can we get more information about these um, snow play locations on the website, and then this is the winter recreation map that we looked at earlier, uh, kind of more comprehensive maps for various winter recreation activities.
And then now we're back to the process. So thank you for listening to my presentation and I'm going to open the floor to kind of thoughts and feelings, <laughs> suggestions. So then we can start with the question. Um, what it, let's start with locations. Where do you guys think the best locations are to start? We're not just talking about where there's snow. Don't look, my agent. So that's why I'm so that's why I push it so much for this. So it's a good question. Where there's snow. Yeah, ultimately it's a good question. If it's, if it's trending higher, it is. And you know, the challenges Tamarix had the last couple years about there's no snow down low. They all want to just get to the snow. Uh, I'm just wondering, uh, you know, what are we, what's up to a three I mean, past bullies if, they, if there's opportunities for things up in that direction? But you, you've already you lined these up with like uh, trailheads and trail system masters. Yeah, many of these were identified in the trail system master plan as my notes. Uh, you know, so the tougher one, they made that back to the country. I think they're going to have a sort of trail all the way back down. Along that road. Yeah. So whether that is an opportunity to drive from the two of them. This whole process is very quiet. I'm not just starting to go back. Well, and, um, as part of my background, I worked at the Maine Police Welcome Center for two and a half years. So, you know, I was at the front desk when we had basically no snow a couple years ago, and you know, folks were coming in all the way up until like April and May, and they wanted to play in the snow. So there's a really big need and want to just play in the snow and have fun, especially from folks from down south who don't see snow very often. And we were very limited where we could send people, and the most consistent snowpack were, we were able to find basically was Mill City, um, up at the Lake Mary Closure, which has some use issues because of um, the cross country ski area being up there, um, as well as certain areas in Sea and Blue, where there's a bit more heavily treed and um, kind of northern facing. So, you know, if we're going to kind of plan for the you know, worst case snow scenario, um, I would. I would propose personally from my experience being that you know higher elevation nodes would be good to start with as well. That way we don't have a high traffic situation where everybody's going to where the snow is, but we don't have facilities to um, withstand that amount of use. So it could. We definitely could. Yeah, it's that because that shows the food. What about transportation? Thinking about it, let's say, you know, you were asking questions about what in addition to snow, what about thinking of areas that are fed by our transportation systems and that's removing the need to get into a car um, to get there and make it convenient for people to come out of their hotels or condos Well, I think what's interesting about that is if you look at what a trailhead is, is to find the trail system master plan, it picks up a lot of these amenities. And I'm wondering if uh, how these things get recommended, say, for funding or infrastructure and that kind of stuff, to say that it becomes formalized as a trailhead, therefore it gets this, this, and this, uh, and that then starts serving a bunch of that master's. Did we create a drive to the for concession services? Mm -hmm. So beyond just hot chocolate, but uh, what about the toy rental? And, you know, so people aren't having to flood or find or go buy the top off the trash can to use it. There's a concession rental that can go with it also. It's around the ability whoever so when you're white, 
Can anyone think of uh, specific locations where if we went that direction with concessionaires where that would lend itself to? And for, and it's, it's interesting, I've been out there a fair amount the last couple of weeks. People, they know these places exist. And they're there. It's the whole thing about getting them the sharp documents saying where that was sited right now by the sharp. It's lots of us in the basin of old snow. I think this transit thing is the case. But that would be a, the analysis of the trailhead would say there's going to be a public transit analysis of part of the So that helps. I think this idea about communities of land and so on. What kinds of other mini section driving in the world? I think the Tamarack issue will come up in the session later about what's happening for like inner records and next space and how we I like the stuff off the scenic loop that people can drive to and they have multiple modes of cross country skiing or other mountain skiing. All of a sudden, you're just getting up with kind of that interactive more, you know, more topic. So, thinking about parking then, because if we go out to any loop and then all of a sudden there's 25 cars going out to see any because we've now created a snow playing area, how do we, we mitigate the impact of cars out there? So, I think we just have to factor the whole thing in. And the scenic loop is a perfect And what, what's the process for that? I mean, what are the obstacles for, I mean, if we if we were to determine, I mean, Dan and I were involved in a discussion this morning where, you know, maybe there, in just in, in, in the abstract, there seems like a great opportunity somewhere out there, whether it's before the crest or around the corner to consolidate some of the staging activities that already happen off the scenic loop, whether it's for people going out to Inyo craters on snowmobiles or people, Backcountry skiing there on the on Earthquake Dome, um, you know. The, obviously, we've got Caltrans involved, right? And for service in town. I mean, how do we? What's the process for that? How do we? I think the first thing we have to do is, is look at where where the locations are. As we're talking about Stockway right here. Yeah. <laughs> There's already some parking lanes built into the scenic group. We build it around that. And then see how the use goes. Well, start with that, and then start looking at what other things appear there into that or not. And then the town is a proponent, starts looking at the more service that we'd like to make sure we're sure that it's reasonable. It's part of the horse plan. And the evaluation of the trail park is obviously a threat to look which we're actually designing. I just never had any funding, so I never went any further. I don't know why that work's already been done. It's just a matter of that stuff together. I mean, it's like the, the, the decision we heard about the OHB OSD staging decision that was made out on Sawbuck Tower Road. It's just a decision that's there. They haven't implemented so a lot of those things lying around. But I think also to your point, what's interesting is that there may be a way to start thinking about setting the programming for it without having to do any capital. So if you could, if it could be figured out to put a couple of signs on the scenic loop, a simple you know, little little frame sign, snow area, and start doing it that way without having to go with the expense of doing all the capital investment, the same thing with the Sherman's loop. It's a backcountry ski area, you don't have to formalize it, get permission to say, hey, this is a backcountry ski area, but a certain a minimal level of investment in, if, if this is here, we're going to tell people where it is, Start very light with the footprint, to see how it works. That could be a good way to do You want to talk a little bit about like uh, the def you talk about the definition of the snowflake.
some a certain definition in the snow park idea, right? Doesn't the Forest Service have a snow park program? It's a state. It's a state. Yeah. It's a state. Yeah, that's, that's like up on Rock Creek Road, it's whatever that is, but it might be good to vote. It's a state. And that was, that was another thing that um, when I talked about the stakeholders meeting, um, I didn't get a whole lot of response to, but I mean, that's, that's another thing we could look into is if we want to, you know, formalize one of these, do we want to add another, like, talk to the state and add another snow park in this area? Because right now when you buy snow park pass, you only have Rock Creek, otherwise you have to go all the way up to top of it, and then you really get your money's worth for it, so that's a different, it's definitely not a free avenue, but it's a different avenue that we can consider as well. I mentioned, Dan, if you could talk a little bit, the town was sort of saying, hey, we want to send people to places to do these kinds of things. Is there any reason that we can't do that? No, we, yeah, we, we can have that discussion with the state meeting for, for eight ways. No, no, but just also, we're going to have places where, yeah, we can send people out to an area if there's, you know, parking So we can do yeah, that. we can sign these shows. So we can, there's no, I, if there's, if there's no reason we could not say to people through you know, the communication channels are, go to the borough bed to plant the snow, just, yeah, these are the things you can, we can just start doing that, at least you've got a place to start sending people to go do this. If you're going to do that, it would be nice to, at the same time, go and encourage people to not take off the spot of the Right, right, for sure, yeah. For all of these reasons, reasons yeah, we're going to be here. Right, right. Yeah. Again, it's an attraction uh, that in the out-of-towners just don't have the recognition as to the safety problems associated with it. Well, and that goes back to the overarching information sharing so having people who are not It's part, a part of that, and then um, folks that I talked to that referenced the AA church also said, you know, a lot of times it was everybody knows about it. Like I heard from my friend, and they heard yeah. from their friends, so it's a lot of word of mouth. Yeah. But the only way we can move away from that is to be able to say, you got to go to all those other places. So can we put together a program that starts talking about these are all the places to go? And I wonder if also if we What's there get there? Yeah. If we have areas with bathrooms, trash cans, possibly concession air, with hot chocolate and right. toys, I would say that yeah. folks, the yeah. traffic yeah. would start to, to meander yeah. away from some of these areas that are not the best place to go. Right. Right. That's where we want them to go. So right now in the town, we're talking a lot about programming at Venice Street Park West. So I don't see that on your map, but I mean, that's essentially a place that becomes kind of a recreation destination to push around with it. Wow. 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 That urban stuff I've got from the original uh, right stuff. Whether we actually have to start physically moving, managing snow, making snow, you know, it's just kind of a broader discussion, but it's, it's part of this. So, anyway, of course. Well, that's a, that's a question I want to get back to again. The Forest Service in 2014 has got very specific about there cannot be any representation of gravity. Right. Is that anything that tells Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Yeah, we're not. All we're happy to just wipe out the whole street from the mountain. But would the town have any problem saying, look, we want you to go over here because you can't go sledding? Can we use the word sledding? Sledding, I mean, it's an area for that. Right. Yeah, because the Forest Service very specifically said, don't call it, say that. So you cannot say anything about grabbing your fed activities. I mean, the logo has changed on the website because they didn't have anybody to slip. Right. 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 Same problem there. The search it should be kind of locked down. But that's not we wouldn't be promoting that. Yeah, but you see it out there, huh? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Sorry. But if you have it, part of the question we can we can talk to people who actually love the snow and build something to talk to the snow on the street. So I'm trying to do a lot of sending. Right. 
Well, that's a question about the impact of the borrow bid if it makes any sense. That's still there, but he actually has a good gap. Not play yet. Oh, that's you care about that. Well, we can say that. Yeah. Yeah. That's the question. That's what we can't say. Yeah, that's why. Board servers say no, you can't have that. Yeah. So we have to we have to yeah. take we have to kind of develop a program, take it to the forest service and say this is what we're going to say. Yeah. This is what we're going to do. These areas like show the feedback given about it. It's not a developed grant program. 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 It's not a Expensive infrastructure, but putting in a hill, putting in some things to help it be more attractive for the mill. And trans is just a matter of where, when, and check dollars and dollars. Well, but it's also like the mill city's got issues. Yeah, got turnaround challenges. Turnaround challenges. Turn challenges. Yeah. So you got to get the right building. Some of the other areas would have some similar challenges. Switch from just being blissed out and having a lot of fun to oh, 
was like, well, what about bathrooms or signs? They're like, oh yeah, is there a bathroom around here? Like, now that you mentioned that. No. <laughs> yeah, and so a lot of times it's not something that you know they think about when they're in the moment until they actually need it, which, especially with families, that's going to be, you know, go from, we don't need it to we need it right now. Um, so, I, you know, certainly, it was interesting kind of going through the survey and having that kind of change of mindset um, happen. But certainly bathrooms and signs and trash cans were kind of the top three that I, I encountered when I was speaking with folks. What was the duration of the activity, for instance? You know, How long? Yeah, what were they playing there for? 30 minutes, an hour, two hours? I mean, you know, I didn't look too closely at that. It would kind of, so I would it's say... It's not a survey question? I'm sorry? It wasn't a survey question. It was not a survey question. We were trying to keep it very limited since, uh -huh. um, you know, like five questions we thought was appropriate. Mm -hmm. But generally speaking, um, kind of just based on my observations, it depends on the weather. Because when it was, there were, I had uh, two survey days where it was just blistering wind, like just getting hammered with wind. No one was out there, it was just me. Um, and then there's, you know, kind of after the first snowfall when we get a, a bluebird day, that's when people spend a lot of time. Um, and also when we just get snowstorms in, when it's just that nice little like snow globe snow and it's not windy, those are the two times that I see people out there for what seems like at least an hour or more. I think it'd be interesting as part of what comes out of this going forward is we have a very interesting conversation in the information uh, track about, okay, so let's say we want to put five new or four or five new snow play things in place. How is that information, how, how, how is the information for those people, how is it going to get disseminated? What are the channels it's going to go through to get the information sources needed to get it out to people? And that's not this track specifically, but it's like infrastructure, but how does it get to it? Yeah, how does it get then get up and get to the public so it can be Yes. Because we should be bringing a lot of new things online all the time. Exactly. And how to frame the expectation locally so that it's not. Wild stuff. Well, in, in parts of the survey, there were a couple of locations where people, when asked how to enhance it, did mention that, like at Mill City, they're like, well, I, I wouldn't want to enhance it too much because that's part of the appeal. It's, it's a little bit more rustic, so I think we'll have to be a little strategic with where we choose. Yes, it's a good location in terms of always having snow and uh, to play in, but on the other hand, it's, it's also kind of an experience thing, too, is where folks like to see a little bit more rustic setting as well. Discovery. You know, the other thing, and it is apples and oranges, but I'll share with you when you raise the question that I had where it's apples and oranges. You can't get the other question. I'm adding it's still the need for the snow play area to get more positioned. And do we actually look at the scenario? Do you actually go out and submit something that would have more of a formal eye in more cases? And that's a, that's a good point as well. Um, oddly enough, when I did surveys at the Scenic Loop, that's, I think, where most of the folks that um, went up to Woolies on a weekend and found so there was a two-hour wait that day to play. <laughs> and so a lot of the folks I talked about there, they're like, well, we just kind of discovered this, but we'd really like to see facilities like Woolies, but not just one, because a two-hour wait just playing in the snow or two isn't what you want to spend your day doing. What, what do you get at Woolies? I believe they have the, the tuna kill. Yeah. Yeah. It actually depends how old they are. Yeah. Because if, yeah. Little one, yeah. Yeah. if you have really young kids, they have little areas of you know, snow playing and the tubes that go around with the carousel thing. And if you have older kids or adults, it's the six lane tubes and tracks. Is there a consistent There's food there. Uh, there's adult beverages. Yeah. Restrooms. Restrooms. Uh, oh, there's the real drive to that back in the day when it was first started. Let's get up there. Yeah. Yes, we convinced the only way they were going to get their family to partake in the activity was to have something that pulled the kids up. That would do it. Yeah. Well, and, um, kind of back into my, my work history, I used to work at the mill and they used to help do the concession of hot chocolate and snacks down at Woolies. And just on a side note, if you do like concessions for hot chocolate and food, is that that was a really big element of 
you know, the mountain having a concession air there is that they're out, folks are out late and they get thirsty and hungry and especially sugar is nice when you're dropping through the snow. So just another kind of side note. And was the thing that the lift is that something that Dave was kind of came up with? Yeah, that's right, it's a different private. But that was something he, is that something he invented? He kind of well, actually, it started off as a sledding you know. So it's a bob sled. The bob sled never really caught on. The snow conditions were right, so it's just great to have a conversation. But there's a lift assist with the bob sled. There's a way to get, you didn't have to walk up there with the bob sled. And lift assist with the bob sled. You might find that in a closing thought too. You might find that you might have a few facilities that might uh, offer elements of the snow play mix. You know what I'm so, you know, yeah. the ice rink, I mean, we can offer a lot of that. I mean, we're talking about Mount Creek Park. We can offer a lot of these elements. It might have the whole sledding and all of that, but we can do. Perhaps the majority, and we have amenities, we have restrooms, toilets, you know, we have concessions, you know what I mean? So we can provide some type of level of play. So I think the broader term, the better. I think the expectation, if it says sledding, I think that's a big expectation. Who wants to sled? That's really the snow play. And I see the snowman. We could probably cover the snowman side, but <laughs> maybe not the sledding side. You see what I mean? So I think there might be some other kind of levels of play that we can kind of identify and communicate to. Many years ago, or 20 years ago, Canyon Lodge was going to be set up with lights. So you had to do a nighttime activity where you had snow biking, you had sledding, you had tubing. It was a combination, just a total snow play area that would take place once the lifts closed down for skiing and would open up for uh, snow play activities. Brilliant. Brilliant. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Really good. Great information. Appreciate you sharing your Saturday. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs>